At the end of episode 2, one of the big questions was, who saw Rusty the night of Carolyn's death? Well, this episode didn't keep us in the dark too long, as one of my predicted suspects from episode 1 has come to the light. We also meet some new characters that would definitely play a big part in both Rusty and Barbara's storyline, and as they say, sometimes it's your own family that can be your worst enemy. It is time for us to discuss and break down episode 3 titled Discovery, full spoilers ahead. After seeing the message from last week, Rusty heads outside and calls that number, and the person on the other line doesn't answer him when he asks them who they are as they hang up on him. We see Barbara follows him outside and he shows her the message and proceeds to tell her about the night of Carolyn's murder. Now as the audience, we see that Rusty was at her house and they end up sleeping together that night. As he tells Barbara that he wasn't there to kill her, as Barbara doesn't have anything to say but most likely has a thousand questions but she decides to walk away. Again, it's tough to really believe Rusty at points because he withdraws so much information until it's brought up and it almost forces him to be honest. At this point, I don't blame Barbara if she doesn't believe anything her husband has to say, especially when it comes to Carolyn. As Rusty looks into his pool, we cut to Raymond who's having a nightmare of Rusty yelling and pushing Carolyn and he tells her that she doesn't know him and know what's inside of him as he sees Rusty killing her and tells Raymond to wake up. Now just before that, again, Rusty around his pool, around water, is consistently in these early parts of these episodes so far and it's just making me think that it has to have some type of importance in dealing with water. Could it be that maybe the murder weapon is somewhere in water, hidden in water, or maybe it's in Rusty's own pool? As Raymond tells his wife about the dream, and she states the obvious, that it appears that Raymond thinks that Rusty is guilty, and she follows that up by saying, I think I am not on your side, Raymond. I am worried about you. Now Raymond's wife Lorraine tells him how she's worried about the attention it's going to bring to him and their family and his legacy and with his best friend being involved it just makes things more complicated. As she says if he loses this will be tough on him or he do what needs to be done to make sure that he wins. A nice little motivational speech from his wife as Raymond just knows that Rusty didn't kill Carolyn. We see Rusty's family remains to stay at home to avoid any coverage from the media as Rusty gets a new message from the unknown person as they give him an address to meet at later that day. As Rusty shows Raymond this new message and within this same conversation, Raymond also learns that Rusty was indeed at Carolyn's house the night of her murder. Now to me, Raymond's got a great poker face and really keeps his composure because at this point, if I was Raymond, I'm sitting Rusty down and telling him to tell me everything that happened that particular night, but also give me all the information and details, the good, the bad, all within that relationship with Carolyn, no more surprises. Now Rusty explains that he went over there after work and even though they were officially over, Rusty tells him that he wanted to go there to change that. As Raymond suggests they get the police involved with this mysterious person messaging Rusty, but Rusty is just too curious and wants to meet up. As Raymond introduces Rusty to a new addition to the team who goes by the name of Mayan Winslow, now she's a great lawyer, but more importantly, she's a woman. I would imagine he said that last point because it would bode well for them in the appearance of the jury that a woman attorney involved in a case of a woman being murdered shows that she believes in Rusty's innocence. Now, I could be wrong, but you tend to see women attorneys being attached to cases involving women, especially when it comes to murder. For example, Carolyn was the lead prosecutor in the Bunny Davis case. Now, something that was briefly mentioned earlier in the episode was not having a time of the actual murder and Rusty having an alibi could be difficult. Now I would think knowing his whereabouts after he left and when the body was found by the housekeeper, which by the way, why hasn't that housekeeper been brought in for questioning yet? But again, knowing when he left and when the body was found, to me, it would be key to having a better idea when Carolyn was actually murdered. Now being kept locked up at home isn't working for Barbara as she heads back in to work, but she isn't welcomed back with open arms. As what appears to be her her boss by the name of Kate tells her to take time off and to take care of herself and to keep from work because it could affect their business. As Barbara brings up how she needs her job to kind of create a distraction with everything going on with her husband, but her boss still tells her to take a leave of absence, but leaves her with some advice. Differentiate. You're not we. You're not him. So the question is, will she take that advice and will we start to see Barbara distance herself from Rusty? As Barbara heads into a bar and begins a conversation with a young bartender, now after a couple of drinks and not really having her husband available to share these type of moments with, we see them have a little bit of small talk as she doesn't hesitate to tell him that she's recently lost her job and more importantly, her husband is on trial for being accused of murder. 
Now, the bartender is familiar with the trial, and he flat out asks Barbara if Rusty actually did it, which she responds by saying no, but says something interesting, which is that beautiful women tend to have a lot of enemies. Now, this isn't completely uncommon for her to say something like this, because of course there has to be some level of hatred towards Carolyn for sleeping with a married man, but it's the little details or characters saying little things like that that I think is important to note. Now the bartender takes her remarks as a way to flirt with her looks and you can just tell that there's definitely something there between these two characters. Now it's not uncommon for someone who's been cheated on to go out and seek some type of revenge and cheat themselves and I wouldn't be surprised if we see Barbara go down that path. Remember, she's in the need of distraction and sleeping with another person could be a great way to keep her mind off of Rusty's case. Now sticking with Barbara, it didn't take her that long to share the news about the bartender as she tells Lorraine. Now for a second there I thought to myself, man Barbara is really quick to make this into a a situation and telling Lorraine about this guy she met at her bar but then I remembered her and Rusty got married and had a family when they were in their early 20s so really neither one of them got the opportunity or the experience of other relationships in their early adulthood and didn't really experience different partners and any ounce of affection from the opposite gender would probably get them excited. Now to me Lorraine was being a hypocrite in this scene as he suggests Barbara should maybe get into this adventure aka cheat on Rusty. Now I'm not gonna lie this conversation seemed to be a bit forced and just to add drama to the situation or to have a subplot for Barbara and giving Lorraine something to do because this situation to me involving Rusty's murder case is so new and so fresh and could potentially destroy her family and I would think this particular conversation would be the last thing on her mind. But also I just don't get the vibe that Barbara and Lorraine would be like this close of friends just because their husbands are close doesn't mean they have to be best friends. Now it could just be me, it's their first scene together and maybe their friendship will eventually grow on me. Cut to Tommy flexing his new position to Detective Rodriguez as he reiterates his demands for her to stand down and not get involved in Rusty's case. As he tells her that he knows about them visiting Reynolds as Rodriguez brings up how it's odd that they don't look into Reynolds being involved despite him being in prison. As we see Nico walking her out, he tells her, Our only pursuit is justice. Just be sure you do not stand in that path. Now last week I took Tommy and Nico off my board of suspects for now but based on this look here Rodriguez would completely disagree with me. As she calls in a favor and requests that the files in the Bunny Davis case be sent to her it's going to be interesting to see what she finds and if there is a possibility that Reynolds knows about that second DNA found on Bunny and if it is connected to Carolyn. Now back with Rusty, he arrives at this mysterious location and as he walks around, he finds out that the mystery person was no other than the one who I speculated could have known about the affair and it's Michael, Carolyn's son. As Michael asks Rusty why did he kill his mother and we see Rusty tells him that he didn't do it but he wants to actually find who actually killed her. As Michael tells Rusty that he actually has pictures and videos of him on the night that she died, Michael says that these photos and videos only prove that Rusty was the only one in and out of the house. As Rusty points out, well, that's not true because you were there, which clearly upsets him. Now, Michael tells Rusty that he actually met with the district attorney and handed them the photos and videos, but Rusty still wants to know why they're here as Michael tells him, I wanted to see your face. Now after this scene, I have so many questions revolving around Michael, but something that come to mind is how long was he taking photos and videos of his mom and Rusty hooking up? Did he keep them to himself? Did he ever get his dad involved? But more importantly, will the footage maybe help or hurt Rusty in this case? As Rusty fills Raymond in on the meetup that he just had with Michael, he's officially introduced to Maya as they're getting prepared for a status conference. Now at this meeting, Raymond doesn't want Rusty to say a word and he doesn't want him to mess this up, which actually triggers a memory from Rusty and takes him back to a time that Carolyn told him a similar thing. As we cut to a flashback of what appears to be them falling in love was a no-no in this affair but Rusty and her broke that rule or at least Rusty looked to be the one in love as she wanted to control this from happening. Which makes it appear that Carolyn was more interested in the physical aspect of their intimacy whereas Rusty was more interested in actually having feelings between them. Now at this meeting, all parties are looking over the evidence as Raymond is surprised to see his name mentioned as a witness as Tommy and Nico will be pursuing charges of obstruction to justice. Remember, this is exactly what Lorraine was talking about earlier about Raymond's legacy being at risk. Now they also learn that Rusty's therapist will be asked to speak. Now I'm no expert, but I thought that the client confidentiality would prevent this from happening, but apparently there's some gray areas. Maybe when there's a murder case and a prosecutor involved, maybe rules change, but also it's brought up in this conversation that if she is brought to be asked to stand, she can make her own exceptions to speak about things openly, but if she chooses not to, as Rusty brings up, it will appear that they're withholding information. 
As both sides are going back and forth at each other, we see the judge has to step in and reminds them. This trial will be about evidence and law. What it won't be about is gamesmanship. Do I make myself perfectly clear? Man, I love the look on Tommy and Nico's faces when Raymond brings up the fact that they're withholding evidence as he's referring to the footage that Michael gave them. As we see Tommy making their claim that it was still in process and it was still being looked at, we see the judge put your foot down and demand that they turn this evidence in, as we later find out that a new suspect will be brought forward. Now at home, Jalen makes light of the good start and the good news Rusty shares with them as she actually just wants to know what's the evidence that they have against her dad. Now Rusty proceeds to tell them about his DNA, but also about him consistently messaging her and the fact that she was pregnant with his child and the way she was tied up is the exact same way from their previous case with Bunny and they were the only ones that knew those fine details. Now, Rusty saying that him and Carolyn were the only ones that knew about how Bunny Davis was tied up to me technically isn't true because we know that there were actually people in the jury, which makes me think, what if one of those people were involved in Carolyn's murder? As Rusty points out how the outcome of this unique circumstances could look against him. Circumstantial. And in a lot of ways it's a stretch, but it's, it's damaging. And all the evidence, no matter how circumstantial, points to me. Now, out of nowhere, Kyle brings up if his dad would consider taking a plea deal, which completely catches Rusty by surprise, as we can tell by the look on his face. Now, either Kyle has clearly learned the thing or two from his father being a prosecutor for most of his life, or he looked it up as he brings up that if given manslaughter, Rusty could only face eight years versus a life sentence. Now, similar to my thought process with Michael, I suggested the theory of Kyle finding out about his father's affair and he was the one that actually killed Carolyn, and him mentioning this plea agreement situation makes me think that he could have looked this up. What if Kyle was thinking, I'm going to pin this murder on my dad, he's going to be smart and make a plea deal of manslaughter and only get eight years and it's some type of form of punishment in his eyes. Now, of course, this is just a wild theory and a bit of a stretch and I know that, but again, this is David E. Kelly and if you've seen most of his shows, you know that anyone and everyone can be a suspect, especially when you think about the show on HBO, The Undoing, keep your eyes on these damn kids. After seeing that his son might not have his full support, we yet again see a bit more of the night of Carolyn's death as we see them arguing and Rusty seems to be the one that's the aggressor as Barbara walks in to check on him. Now Barbara reminds him that Kyle only said that because he's scared that he might lose his dad forever as Rusty isn't sure that that was the case as he says, He was thinking that I should plead guilty for murder. As Barbara tells Rusty what happened with her job earlier, we see that Kyle eventually apologizes to his father as he cries and they eventually hug. Now, knowing what we know what happens at the end of this episode, it makes me wonder, what did Kyle see to make him bring up the manslaughter idea? As we cut over to Tommy and Nico, who are discussing new strategies of how to make Rusty look in this case as they're picking between the angles of obstruction versus murder. Now, Nico points out how much Tommy has taken this personal and Raymond would use this against him. Again, I get the service level of the jealousy from Tommy against Rusty, but there has to be more to this as far as Tommy just being so gun ho on taking Rusty down. Is Tommy secretly in love with Carolyn and did she like shoot him down? I just found it so funny that Nico even brings up Tommy's personality flaws and talks to him about his clear hatred towards Rusty. As Tommy claims that he doesn't hate Rusty and he will have some hard evidence coming soon. Now Maya gets some alone time at Rusty and she asks if he loved Carolyn, which is a question she's preparing him for just in case they want him to testify. As Rusty dances around the question and she pushes him to finally admit that it was about lust and love, as he details the moment that he actually had emotional attachment to Carolyn. We cut to a flashback case involving a young girl as Rusty expresses the natural sense of tenderness that Carolyn displayed to this child, as this was the exact moment. Now, even though Rusty tells her that he knew that this relationship would ruin his life, he also says that he didn't hurt her and he would never hurt her, and he knows that there's a killer out there that's getting a good laugh out of this as everyone's looking at him as the murderer. Now, this is a quick scene, but it's still effective in showing the effects that this case has on Rusty's family, as Kyle is at a baseball game and we see his mom is showing support and she's proud of him, but we also see the other parents are looking at her with a nasty look. Now I could see this scene creating the scenario in which Barbara being asked to leave her job and connecting this to Kyle maybe being asked to leave this team and him being a distraction especially after what we find out at the end of this episode. Which we end this episode with Rusty replaying the last conversation he had with Reynolds as he goes back to the crime scene. Which again I'm no expert but I didn't think that a suspect would be allowed to go to the crime scene again regardless of their position as we get more shots of them spending intimate time together 
together, but those times were overshadowed by him just seeing her dead body there. As Raymond tells Rusty that he knows about the side mission that he has Rodriguez on, and he knows how much pressure would be on them to find a suspect, and failure to do so would be terrible for them, but Rusty knows once the jury sees the horrific crime scene, they're going to want to blame someone, and Rusty wants an alternative. And he refuses to let this idea go that there's another murderer out there. We see Tommy listening in to one of the many conversations between Carolyn and Rusty, and it looks clear as day that Rusty didn't look good in this picture. As it appeared that Carolyn was being forced to confess her love for him, and we see Tommy practicing his lines. As the last scene shows Rusty getting those photos taken by Michael, and some of the photos show them happy together, but slowly shows him being obsessive and more shots of them together, but Rusty notices something. He sees these shots of someone on a bicycle in a hoodie, and as he zooms in, it's Kyle. Again, this just goes back to my theories that I had about Kyle back in episode 1 and 2. Now, this doesn't mean that Kyle is a killer, but the question is, what did he actually see that night? Did he see his dad yelling at Carolyn? Did he see his dad grabbing Carolyn? Or did he see them engaging sexually? Again, going back to my thoughts in episode 1, the look that Kyle had on his face when his dad brought up Carolyn, you can just see that there was something off, and again, I thought that he was maybe aware of this affair, and it seems that that seems to be the case. But again, the question remains, how long did he know about this affair? Was this the only time that he caught his father over there with Carolyn? And to point out the obvious, that's a pretty clear picture that Michael got of him, which makes me think, are Michael and Kyle secretly working together? Did they kill Carolyn together? Again, if we're going down that rabbit hole, Carolyn left Michael dad and broke up their family and now breaking up Kyle's family and things just got out of hand. And we know that Kyle could have had access to the Bunny Davis case. Which speaking of Kyle, this photo is now evidence which means to me that Kyle will be directly involved and will be questioned. Now the question I have is, what happens when you have two suspects that live under the same roof? I would imagine that the judge will probably have one of them leave the house so they're not giving each other stories. But again, going back to Kyle and what this can mean for him moving forward, number one, I think it's going to be clear that his baseball team is going to ask him to leave, which is going to get him upset. And again, just showing more of the domino effects that this case has on his family. But I want to go back to the root of it. I don't think Kyle being there necessarily makes him the killer, even though I have my crazy theories but it definitely will have him be questioned in this trial. Now look, this is episode three. No way did they just reveal the killer to be one of these kids, but that's the beauty of a murder mystery that each week will lead you to believe that it's a new character who could potentially have killed Carolyn. Honestly, the chances of the kids being the killers are like 20% to me, but again, that 20% does have some weight regarding their motives. Overall, this was a bit of a slower episode with not a ton of new evidence besides Michael's photos and now Kyle being involved, but I do appreciate how the show at least addresses the cliffhangers that happened off of the previous episode. Going back to episode one, we found out that Carolyn was pregnant, and we literally found out in the very next episode that Rusty was the father. At the end of episode two, we got the text, and immediately in episode three, Three, we find out who texts him. Just something that I appreciate that they don't leave us in the dark for too long. Now this episode did do a good job of focusing more on the supporting characters lives being disrupted because of this affair. We have Raymond's legacy being ruined if he loses his case. We have Barbara losing her job and possibly getting into this affair with the bartender. And again, going back to Kyle, him being in those photos, him maybe not being a part of the baseball team, him looking at his father differently, especially after catching his father in this affair. Now the main characters of suspects remain the same from episode one, but even with my low percentage, we have to put Michael and Kyle to the spotlight and at least question how much did they actually know about that night. Thank you all for watching this week's breakdown. I'm really digging this show and I hope you all like it as well. And if you would like me to continue this weekly coverage, please like this video, but also comment your thoughts and your theories and your predictions about what you hope to see in the weeks ahead. And make sure to stick around by subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell notification. Thank you again. You all are awesome. Stay safe and I'll catch you all on the next breakdown. Thank you.